Welcome back to my video series on the dependency inversion principle. In the last videos, we discussed the usefulness of composing object graphs flexibly when we introduce abstractions at the correct points in our code. This allows us to inject different supplier objects into client code so that we can alter or enhance some parts of our system, but the client code remains unaffected in this case. In our example, we have two different writer implementations, console writer and file writer, and we can exchange them to specify a new target without affecting the code of the copy process class. But what if we want to target not one, but both of them when copy process calls write? This problem can be solved with the composite design pattern. A composite is essentially an object that forwards method calls to two or more other objects implementing the same interface. Thus, if client code makes a polymorphic call to a supplier, this call arrives at the composite first, which in turn calls all suppliers that are registered with it. This way, you can bundle up the execution of several low-level modules behind one client call. So let's check out how a composite writer would look like in our case. The first important thing is that this new class implements the same interface as the console writer and file writer. But instead of providing a useful implementation of the problem domain, the composite writer just forwards all calls to other writers residing in this collection. This collection is passed in through constructor injection, so this way we can decide which writers should be injected when we build up our object graph in the composition route. This is the simplest form of a composite, and it works perfectly in our case here. But you can also add two more methods, called add and remove, to dynamically alter which objects the composite references during its lifetime. This way you can, for example, reference an additional network writer when the user opened a corresponding connection to a server. Nevertheless, if your composite does not need to be altered dynamically, I would recommend to leave out these methods. Code not written is code you do not have to maintain. Now let's check out the composition route to see how we have to register our types with the DI container correctly to get our composite working. Fortunately, LightInject has integrated support for the composite pattern. You just have to register your classes in a special way. First, you have to register all iWriter types whose instances should be injected into the composite with the DI container. It is of other importance that you also specify a name with this registrations, as you can see here for FileWriter and ConsoleWriter. After that, you can register your composite in the normal way. LightInject notices that this is actually a composite by checking the constructor of the composite writer class. It finds here that it needs a collection of iWriter instances, the same interface that is implemented by the writer composite. Thus, when iWriter is resolved, LightInject creates an instance of composite writer and injects the instances of all other registered writers into it. So when we execute our program now, you can see that the text appears on the console as well as in the file, because our composite objects redirects the calls to all necessary other writers. Is this design pattern directly related to the dependency inversion principle? Well, not really. I basically showed it to you because I thought you were curious how several writers can be targeted on one polymorphic call. In fact, I would argue that there is no type bond between the dip and any object-oriented design pattern. But I think there is some sort of causality between the dip and nearly all design patterns, so check this out. The dip tells you to program against abstractions that are tailored for the client, not against concrete types. In object-oriented programming, this usually means that you introduce interfaces or abstract base classes. The usage of these abstractions inevitably leads to the usage of objects. If you want to call iWriter.write, then you need an object that conforms to the iWriter interface. Or in other words, you cannot call a static method polymorphically. And polymorphic calls are the very essence of object-oriented programming. You want a lot of them in your codebase because this usually means that you decouple a high-level module from a low-level module. And these two can evolve independently as long as the abstraction is stable. Now have a look at the class diagram of the composite pattern. It involves a client, an abstraction, a composite, and other implementations of the abstractions. 
You can also see that the composite has no dependency to other concrete implementations, just to the abstraction. Thus the composite is really flexible because it can handle any implementation of the abstraction, even ones that aren't even written yet. And this is how it is with a lot of object-oriented design patterns, be it the command, memento, repository, mediator, visitor, observer, or really any other pattern. All of them show you how one can structure code in a specific situation and most of them introduce some sort of abstraction for decoupling client and supplier code. With this in mind, I hope you can make sense of class diagrams of design patterns more easily because most of the time a client and an abstraction is involved, so you can mentally fade down their importance and focus on the significant parts of the pattern. So here is the real thing. Think in objects. I believe you got a grasp of how to program against abstractions and how to inject objects in the last videos. I hope you agree that this leads to a tremendous amount of flexibility because you can exchange objects without the client even knowing. Again, the key ingredient here is the use of polymorphic calls. I would even argue that if you do not have a reasonable amount of them in your code base, then your code is probably not object oriented. In fact, code that uses objects here and there and that relies mostly on static or non-polymorphic function calls is rather procedural than object oriented in style. Well, why do I tell you this? When I started programming at university, I learned the C programming language in the first semester. This procedural way of thinking, the decomposition of different problem areas into functions manifested very hard in my brains and it took me almost two years to let go of this paradigm and embrace object orientation in the corresponding programming languages. So I hope you can do this faster than me. Classes are the smallest unit of decomposition and their instances are glued together mainly through interfaces or abstract base classes. So thanks for watching this video and I hope to see you again in the next one. Bye!